Welcome everybody to YouTube Wrestling Champion World Trey Morris here as I am here. I had to say, okay, it's time to do another video, and I'm thinking that this video needs to be done. I need to do this before Survivor Series, because this I think is important. And as you all know, for all my WWE fans out there, that Seth Rollins tore his ACL and MCL and his Minicus at a live event in Dublin, Ireland, I had to go against Kane one on one. Seth Rollins went on to go for a uh, power bomb, and his knee split uh, in the middle of the ring. And so, and so, Seth Rollins is in a hospital for six to nine months, which means he will miss Survivor Series, which he was planned to go against Roman Reigns. One on one at Survivor Series to go on. Which means he will miss Survivor Series, TLC, Royal Rumble, Fast Lane, WrestleMania. He will be gone to probably Survivor Series. And so now there is a tournament, which I wrote all down on here. I just wrote all the matches on here of who won the first round. Who's going to preliminaries? I have all the matches right here on one card. And Triple H was the person who announced it on Monday Night Raw. He said we were going to have a tournament where the finals, the winner, the finalists, are to go on in the main event to fight for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This is going to be a really good match. Especially what I think is going to happen. And what we're going to do, my predictions, my thoughts of the tournament, my thoughts about Seth Rollins breaking his knee injury. So basically for probably the next 20 minutes, we will be talking about this if I can. We'll see how long it takes for me to uh, talk about this. So, my thoughts about Seth Rollins breaking his ACL, MCL, and his thing. Well, here's the thing. The future stuff that was going to happen about Seth Rollins was going to be a pretty good thing to happen, but it wasn't going to be that good because they were going to actually have Seth Rollins break the former WWE champ, former a former WWE champion's record, CM Punk's. He was going to beat CM Punk's 434 days as WWE champion. He was going to break that record and uh, lose the title uh, once he got the chance. Well. Now, the authority's plan of having Seth Rollins be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion for that long is no more. Because after the Dublin Ireland Live event where Seth Rollins' knee snapped, so... Hold on, let me turn this off. I look like I have a mic. Ladies and gentlemen, oh God, it's JR! Ah, here we go. Alright, so anyways... My thoughts about it, I'm I'm really happy about it because I didn't even know about it until like later in the afternoon. Like my friend was like, "Hey, you should check out uh, WWE.com." I was like, "Why?" Well, they were like, "Well, the champion Seth." I was like, "Seth Rollins?" They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "What about him?" They say he t uh, tore his, I mean, his knee. He's having surgery. He's out for. Uh, he's out, gonna be out. I had a shocked face on my look. I'm like, "Are you serious? Are you serious?" I went on the computer about five minutes later. All of a sudden, I saw Seth Rollins out the six to nine months towards ACL, MCL, and molecular meniscus. I mean, meniscus. I don't know how to say it. Meniscus? Meniscus? Something? So, basically, I was flipping for joy saying yes, yes, yes. And there's also another plan I need to talk about after this tournament thing that I feel like is going to be a really good thing for the future of John Cena. And why he hasn't been on television for a while, and what's probably going to happen for plans of WWE. So anyways, my thing about Seth Rollins, get well soon, Rollins, but don't come back soon. Just be a face for a little while. Because my prediction is probably going to uh, see what's going to happen for Seth Rollins probably going to try to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship back, but 
But my prediction, Seth Rollins is probably going to become a face against the authority. But all my prediction, I'm going to uh, tell you what uh, I'm going to tell you what's going on in the matches, and then I'm going to tell you uh, my prediction of who's going to win, who's going to I uh, I go on to the semifinals, who's going to go on to the finals, and who do I think is going to win the uh, the match in Survivor Series for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This is my predictions. So, the first match of the night was when Roman Reigns was almost given an offer to join the Authority and become the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. I go all the way to the finals with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and the winner of that match, a winner of that tournament, was going to go on and face Roman Reigns at Survivor Series if Triple H, if he joined Triple H. Which Roman Reigns was like, I'm not, uh, I don't take offerings, so you can take your offering and shove it. So uh, Triple H was like, all right, you have a match, and it starts now. And it was a tournament first round. It was the first match of the tournament. Roman Reigns versus The Big Show. Big Show put up one hell of a fight since their last match was at Extreme Rules and a last man standing match for, the, uh, for just last man standing. Which, in case Roman Reigns won, Roman Reigns won this one too. Big Show choke slammed him, but he couldn't keep him down. Roman Reigns ducked under a knockout punch and speared him, which got him the one, two, three. So Roman Reigns moved on to the to the second uh, second round. Next match that uh, next match that we need to talk about is who was going to face Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight cha uh, for the chance to fight for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Which was Cesaro versus Sheamus. Cesaro, I mean, I got a pretty good advantage out of it since Sheamus had Bad News Barrett with him. And this was one hell of a thing for it to happen because they had um, one of the soccer players from the Manchester United there. That's what kept Sheamus and Bad News Barrett distracted because Bad News Barrett got slapped. He literally got slapped like. <laughs> and Sheamus. Was distracted. Cesaro hit him with an uppercut. Rolled him over. One, two, three. Cesaro went on and moved to the uh, second quarter to face Roman Reigns, which was going to be really good for that. So, I'm going to put this right here. All right. These are two matches that happened on SmackDown two nights ago. Del Rio versus Stardust. Del Rio... Ever since Hell in a Cell, when he beat John Cena, unfortunately, for the United States Championship, has been on a kind of a roll since. But I don't think he's going to win this. I don't think Del Rio is going to win this at all. I might think he might hit the semifinals. Because since Ryback ain't going to uh, go on, so. Which I'll get to that soon, because the next match I'm going to talk about soon. So. Del Rio hit a stomping, one of those little things where he puts them on a tree of woe and then stomps on their chest or their face. That's what ended Stardust's chances of becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Del Rio moved on. The next match, which was the biggest upset I've ever seen in WWE history, Ryback versus Kalisto. Ryback gave it all he's got. He's uh, had the biggest chance of his career to become WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But in the end, he was flat on his back, one, two, three, in the middle of the ring by Kalisto. The biggest upset of all, Kalisto beats Ryback. Right, uh, so basically, it's Del Rio versus Kalisto. I'll tell you who I thought was going to win the first round and why. Because this was actually freaking insane that Kalisto won. I was flipping out. I was going, are you kidding me? Alright. So, one of these matches happened on Raw. The other happened on two nights ago on SmackDown on Thursday. Sorry, let me fix my hat. There we go. So, Owens versus Titus O'Neil. This happened on Raw last, uh, last week. Well, this happened on Raw in the beginning of the week. Owens versus Titus. Titus had a big chance. He actually dominated most of that match, but in the end, Owens throws him into the ropes and pop-up power bombs him and ends it all, which kept Owens 
with the Intercontinental Championship and the chance to go on to probably become the first Intercontinental and WWE World Heavyweight Champion in history. It will be like Seth Rollins if he moves on to the finals and wins. If he does, I will be so mad that he holds on to both the titles I own. I'm mad that he owns the Intercontinental Championship. I don't want him holding the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Uh-uh. He needs to stay with the U.S. Tag Team and the Intercontinental. That's what I think he should stay in. Neville versus Barrett. Sheamus was at ringside for this one, but there was no distraction because the lead kicker of the Manchester United wasn't there. So it was just Neville and Barrett. Sheamus got kicked out of there. And while Neville hit a royal red arrow to get the 1-2-3, and Neville moved on to face Kevin Owens like I predicted. These Both of these matches happened on Raw. Ziggler versus Miz. Miz actually put up one hell of a fight. He fought like Bret Hart. He fought like it was his last match. He fought really hard. He fought really tough. And, but in the end, Ziggler hit a super kick to get the 1-2-3. This was one hell of a match. And I'm so excited that Ziggler goes on. Now, the last match of this 16-man tournament. Say so who goes on to the second round is Ambrose, Dean Ambrose versus Ziggler's enemy, Tyler Breeze, who's accompanied by Summer Rae. Dean Ambrose actually had an arm injury during this. He had a shoulder injury, which Tyler Breeze took advantage of, but in the end, hold on, let me grab my charger because my battery's about to die, and I don't want it to die on y'all guys. So let me plug this in for you guys. So I don't lose you. <laughs> so anyways, Tyler Breeze took advantage of him, but in the end, Dean Ambrose hit the dirty deeds to move on. So it's Ziggler versus Ambrose in the uh, in the second round. Now, my predictions of who's actually going to go on the first round and move on to the second round to see who's going to go on and face the WWE uh, for the chance. Here's my predictions of what was going to happen. Roman was going to beat Show. Cesaro was going to beat Sheamus. Del Rio was going to beat Stardust. Ryback was going to beat Kalisto, because I thought, no chance in hell. Ziggler was going to beat Miz. Ambrose was going to beat Breeze. Owens was going to beat Titus, unfortunately. And I thought Neville was going to beat Barrett. So most of these matches I had right, except for Kalisto and Ryback, which I, was disappointing. Now, who do I think is going to go on to the, uh, for the semifinals? Roman's going to move on. Ambrose is going to move on. I really don't want to say Owen's going to move on, but I know it's probably going to happen. And Del Rio's going to move on. And who do I think is going to win between these two? Between Del Rio and Roman Reigns? Roman Reigns. Who do I think is going to win between Owens and Ambrose? Ambrose. I believe... That my prediction for the finals is Ambrose versus Roman Reigns. I'm thinking this is actually going to be like 1998 Survivor Series. Who remembers the 1998 Survivor Series? No one in the audience, of course. So let me tell you what happened. Well, I'm thinking some of you have learned your WWE history because I actually do some references about some old WWE uh, past references. So, anyways. At the end of the Ma uh, Survivor Series, it was Mankind versus The Rock. The Rock and Mankind were having one hell of a bout, and The Rock put his, uh, Mankind in a sharpshooter, and Vince McMahon instantly screwed Mankind and rung the bell, causing The Rock to win the championship and The Rock to join the corporation. Here's what I think it gets interesting. This year, I'm thinking Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose the two greatest best friends of all are going to go one-on-one -on -one at Survivor Series. And I'm thinking this is going to happen. I'm thinking Roman Reigns is going to hit the spear. One, two. Actually, no. I'm thinking Roman Reigns is just going to turn heel and join the authority. Which I think in Seth Rollins' return, he's going to turn face. He's going to be a babyface turn. 
And he's going to uh, go against the authority and go against Roman Reigns for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. That is my predictions. This is all of it. Now, so for the next six minutes, I need to talk about something that's really important that will go for the future of the WWE. And it's something about The Undertaker, too. Now, after Hell in a Cell, John Cena hasn't wrestled in a little while. John Cena hasn't uh, gone uh, gone to the live events. He hasn't gone to the live tele. Uh, uh, he hasn't gone to Monday Night Raw or Thursday Night SmackDown in a little while. Why? Because he's taking a break. John Cena's taking a break, and I support his decision. I support it because he has been working for the past near six, 15, 16 years of the WWE. He's been working for 13 years of the WWE. And he has not had a break. He has done Make-A-Wish Foundation. He's done autograph signings. He's done movies. He's done live events. He's done Monday Night Raw, Friday nights, Thursday nights, freaking main events, superstars, championship wins, championship losses, injuries, returns, WrestleManias. He's done it all. I believe the man deserves a break once in a little while, and he's getting a break. Because the last break he had was two years ago. At freaking... When he had the injury, when he uh, when Daniel Bryan... Actually, no, it was... Yeah, two years ago. Daniel Bryan, when Daniel Bryan beat John Cena for the, w, for the WWE Championship, because Cena had an injury, and he needed to do this, and so he... Let Daniel Bryan win. John Cena went on, and then after Hell in, uh, when Hell in a Cell came around, John Cena came back. That was a two month thing. John, C um, they're telling me that John Cena is going to go on to either face Del Rio for the United States Championship at TLC, which I'm thinking is going to be the, a win for John Cena, which I might actually record it if it actually happens. But the Biggest match I'm hearing that WWE's planning right now is Undertaker versus John Cena at WrestleMania. Now, Undertaker's got to go against the Wyatt family with Kane at Survivor Series, which is going to be a really good match. And But for John Cena's return, I'm going to record that for a reaction if I can get it. And WrestleMania... I will be recording John Cena versus Undertaker if it happens at WrestleMania. When at what John Cena uh, match happens at WrestleMania, I will be recording a reaction of it. You guys will see my insanity and my cheering. I will give commentary. I will do uh, my best to make sure that this uh, match is going to be really, really good. So, Undertaker versus John Cena is going to happen probably at WrestleMania. But for right now, we just keep our hopes up that John Cena makes a good return. He's going to probably face Del Rio and win the United States Championship and probably lose it. But here's another thing that's probably going to happen. If Undertaker and John Cena does not happen, John Cena is probably going to go on and go on to fight for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, making him a 16-time world champion, which I support all of his decisions. I support what he does. I respect the man. I love the man. He, I've been watching his uh, all his matches since his debut. I've been uh, watching it since the beginning. So basically, this guy is the best. To, and to me, this guy's my number uh, my number one superstar. The best. And I don't care if y'all say John Cena sucks to me. I don't care. My opinion, John Cena is the best. He's done stuff that no one's ever done. John Cena is a two-time Royal Rumble winner, Money in the Bank winner, 15-time world champion, four-time United States champion, uh, four-time tag team champions. And this guy ain't getting that much respect. I mean, it's kind of sad that people don't cheer for him because uh, he should be getting respect for this. For all that he's done for the WWE Universe, doing U.S. Open challenges every week. I mean, come on. you got to give this man some respect. But, anyways. 
this has been a really good video. I've been talking for 20 minutes now. So, thank you guys for watching this 20 minute video. This is just what's going on with the WWE. What's been going on? What's the plans? What's my predictions for for Survivor Series? That's going to be really good because this is 25th anniversary of The Undertaker, which I'm thinking is going to be really good. But for right now, I thank you guys for watching this video. Like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe for more. Till next time, YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World signing off, saying later.